everyone. Are you ready for group lesson? This is my first time doing this, and so I want you to bear with me. It might be a little rough. I am at my friend Rebecca's house. Do you remember Rebecca from group lessons at the church? Rebecca and I have been friends for over 30 years. So we used to live very close to each other and we're still best friends. So I'm glad we can make at least this first group recording together. Um, I thought we would start just by playing like we always do. So um, how about we start with um, the Twinkle theme, okay? Can you give us an introduction? And you can play along when I play, okay? strings before we try them in the piece. So let's start with um, Go Talent Roadie, Rebecca. If we were playing Go Talent Roadie, the bowing alone would look like Go Talent Roadie. That's the first measure. And I could just play that bowing without the fingers, just on an A string. Um, Let's try it. I'll play it, and then you you play it after me. Rebecca will play with you, okay? So this is just on the A string, okay? bows, pretty legato. Go Talent Rodi is pretty legato. That means smooth. All right, let's try it in another piece. Um, let's try Lightly Row. Now, Lightly Row starts on the E string, right? The first note is on the E string. So if we play just the open string bowing for Lightly Row, it would sound like this. lightly row where we don't go on the E string at all and so if we're not playing open E we would have to play fourth finger on the A string so I would like us all to try lightly row without going to the E string at all I still want you to use pretty big bows though and play legato let's do the whole piece okay Rebecca 
with an introduction. I'm sorry, what was oh, that? Right. Wrong introduction. Pardon me. <laughs> oh, I gave her an accompaniment book that I used when I was little, and it's in German. Oh, it's titled in German. The line there was called Papillon, which means butterfly, right? Oh. <laughs> I guess they have different names for them. I'll this, try again. this is the introduction to Lightly Room. exactly like the open E. Open E is a really skinny string. You can look at your own violin. I think I'm getting on the camera with this. My E string is the skinniest string and I think yours is too. Um, a is a little thicker and so that changes the way um, the note sounds. But we want fourth finger on the A string to sound as close to open E as we can get. So this is how you do that. If you have tapes, make sure your finger's right on the tape. Um, when I play fourth finger on the A string, I try to get my fourth finger to have a really nice curve so that it makes a little tunnel for the E string to go through. Um, if my finger is touching the E string, then it's gonna, change the sound that I make. It's gonna make it a little more muted. I'll show you what I mean. This is with a nice curve. It rings quite a bit. Now, if I'm touching the E string when I play that, it just doesn't ring as much. So you wanna to try to get a nice curve. My pinky is terrible at curving, but we try to get it as curvy as, as we can, okay? With a little tunnel. So I want you to experiment this week with your fourth finger and just try to get your violin to ring as much as it can on this four. You can test it with the open E, make sure you're really in the right place. Here's four. Go ahead and try that right now. See if you're Fourth finger and your open E sound the same. I'm gonna try it. Rings a lot. Not as much, I have to kind of work on that. That's better. Okay, you can work on that by yourself. Another piece that we can play well, the beginning of Go Talent Roadie, we can do it all on the A string. Let's just play the first line of Go Talent Roadie all on the A string, okay? Can I have an introduction? Go Talent Roadie, I just go ahead and I play open E. Now that you know how to play fourth finger, you have a choice about whether you're going to play four on the A string or open E. And sometimes it makes more sense to play open E 
for instance, if you're going to have the note right after that open E be another note on the E string, it might make sense just to go ahead and play open E. And sometimes it makes sense just to keep everything on the A string. Let's see, let's play another piece, Rebecca. Um, let's jump to Hunter's Chorus. There's a place in Hunter's Chorus, the galloping place, that I'd like to work on with just the open strings again. So the place I'm thinking about sounds like this. You know the place. Um, if we just do the bow on open strings, this is what the bow looks like. Can you try that? I'll do it, and then you do it. And I want you to notice if your bow leaves the string after the up bow a little bit. It should jump off the string just this much. Okay, we'll do back and forth with Rebecca again. because we're playing down here. And if your pinky is falling off down here, it's really hard to get it back on the string. So make sure you have a really nice curve to your pinky and a really strong pinky. Let's do it one more time. before that is Grenadiers. And a hooked bowing means you do your bow one way and then you just hook a little note the same way on it. So if I was going down, I'd do a long down bow and then I'd hook one more little down bow. And then I can go up and then hook a little up bow. So it would look like down, down, up, up, down down, up, up. Can you try that with me? Down, down, up, up, down, down, up, up. Let's try it on. Mm. Let's try it on A, down bow, and E, up bow. So it's going to look like this. Can we go back and forth, Rebecca? Uh -huh. So. Get it? 
A major scale like that. So um, each note is going to be a different bow. Okay. Ready? Go. Try that this week. It's a good exercise. And we could try it a little faster. Let's go about bum, 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 bum. Ready? Go. two grenadiers. Let's see. This is the first thing we play in two grenadiers. If we just leave our fingers out of it, I'm going to put my hand here, and we just do the bowing, it's going to sound like this. Let's just try that, okay? Ready, go. There are some really little notes. That is the piano introduction. So whenever you see those tiny notes in your music, you know that you don't actually have to learn those notes. They just put them in there so you know what the introduction sounds like, and when it's over, that's when you play. Okay? Um, Rebecca is going to be recording some things for you all. Um, so that you can play with accompaniment at home. And some pieces, like the two grenadiers, have uh, an introduction that's already written out. Um, in, in book four, I think there's even a piece in book three where there's uh, writ written out introductions. So that's one way to do an introduction. But another way is, Rebecca, when you make up an introduction, you just you kind of take the last few measures of the piece, right? Right, okay. Yeah, and I think that's what your recording does too. So it's, it's gonna be kind of hard in some pieces to know when you're supposed to start, um, but we'll, pra we'll do a little bit of practice. But I just wanted you to know that Two Grenadiers has this little note 
introduction written out in the music so you know exactly when to start this piece. And you'd know anyway, because you've been listening to your recording. Enough talk. Let's play two grenadiers all the way through, okay? I'm gonna get I'm gonna get the camera so I can swing it over here. Okay. So it will look very familiar when you get over here, you'll see the same pattern of black and white keys, although it's a little different on the harpsichord. Um, and I moved my music stand to just to show you um, that you can tune. I mean, if you play the harpsichord, you pretty much need to tune yourself. So we tune our own instruments, and that's you know a couple hundred different notes to tune. Uh, takes a little while, and that's a part of every performance and every serious rehearsal and even maintenance at home. It, this is how the sound is made. On the piano, there's a little hammer that when you push a key, a hammer comes up and taps the, the string and makes the sound that way. So the harpsichord, you push the uh, push a key, and um, the key is just a piece of wood that goes on back there. It's really simple, and it comes up and pushes up one of these things, which are called jacks. Pushes the jacks up, and each jack has a little pick on the end, and that's called a plectrum. So the jack goes up, the plectrum plucks the string on the way up, and on the way down, it falls back into place without making the sound again. Hmm. Yep. So there's one for each note. Can you take that out again and, uh -huh. and show it to us kind of sideways? Cause yeah. I couldn't really see the, um, is it like a little hook? It's, it... it's just a piece of, it's called, it's a type of plastic. It's called Delrin plastic so that it can be shaved down really thin. They used to use mm -hmm. bird's quills. Oh. A long time, and sometimes they still do, but it's illegal to kill the birds now, so we don't want to so do is that. Is it that red thing you're pointing to? The red thing is a damper. It's a oh. piece of felt, and that falls back down on the string to silence it when you're when you let your your note up. Okay, um, I, I see. I yeah, sorry. <laughs> you better talk on. <laughs> I, I see there. the little pick. Yeah. Yeah. Coming out. Okay, it's good. Can you see it? It's yeah. a little white thing. Right. It's this. Does that help? Yeah. Is that showing mm -hmm. it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
So, okay, so that actually plucks the string. It does. It comes up like underneath the string and plucks like that and then falls back down. Mm -hmm. So it's very much like a piece of fingernail. I mean, it probably kind of looks like that. Yeah. So you should never do this on a harpsichord, but this is my harpsichord. So I'm going to take the liberty. That's with my fingernail. Okay. So with the, the plectrum, uh -huh. it's, it's pretty much the same kind of thing. It's just controlled and more or less uniform. I see. And what is this it? is the way they've been doing this for three and four hundred years. Okay. Yeah. There's not anything really that different about my instrument than than box? Yeah, handles especially. Handle had an instrument like this. Oh really? He did. Yeah. And this is a Rucker style instrument and Rucker's was a harpsichord builder who lived uh, he was Flemish. He lived in Belgium. Okay. And he was very famous and everybody wanted his instrument, so this is that style. And um where did you get this instrument? It was made in England by Michael Johnson, who's one of the best in the world. And uh, it came over across the water in a big box. Wow. Mm -hmm. And it, I, what I really like about this harpsichord is, and, and lots of harpsichords I've seen, is it has some really fancy painting on it. Uh -huh. These are called Flemish papers. It's actually like wallpaper. Oh, really? It's yeah. not painted? Mm-mm. Oh. It's, I think it's block printed onto the paper, and then the paper is, you know, hung like wallpaper with, with the glue. I didn't do it. It's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's done by a master craftsman. Cool. It's very yeah. pretty. Mm, Can you is. play a little bit? Yeah, so I was going to play some of um, Minuet Three because we play that on the harp score all the time. That was originally a keyboard piece, wasn't it? It's it's from the uh, it, you know by, we say it's by Bach. It's an Anna Magdalena Bach notebook, which was a, a a big book that they had at Bach's house. And Bach had lots of children, and they were all musical. And his wife Anna Magdalena was very musical. But they would just if they heard something they liked, they'd write it down in this book. So there are things in the book that aren't by Bach, oh. and there are things that are. And this okay. piece comes from that book. So okay. Let's yeah. let's hear what that sounds like. Play the first page or whatever from. The book three version. This is the same as the book one version. Okay. All right. I have a note that's not sounding. Okay, so when that happens, you yeah. want me to do this. <laughs> We're out of time. You have to fix it. <laughs> and it's not a big deal. It's probably just a little sticky. Huh. And it happens. Yep. Wow. And if it breaks, you have to cut a new one. Wow. I know. If my violin breaks, I don't think I could fix it. No, but you could put on a new string. Yeah. I and that's what it's like. Oh. Except you don't have to use knives. <laughs> <laughs> True. Okay. There's that note. So I'm going to start in the middle. Okay. You think? Sure. beautiful thank you mm. well that's just one of Rebecca's harpsichords here I'm gonna move around a little bit here she has two harpsichords look at this that's the big one <laughs> that's the big one. Oh, it has two key yeah two, two keyboards, keyboards. Right. interesting kind of like an organ they're called manuals it's like lots of or church organs you see you know, yeah two. yeah well that's very cool thank you for sharing that with us we can look at it some other time okay Um, yeah, well, hopefully I'll be able to come over here again. It depends how this quarantine thing goes. Um, but I think it's really fun to see all of Rebecca's different instruments. She has some other cool ones, too. So maybe, even if I don't come over, maybe she could make a video and show you guys. So I hope you're all staying healthy and safe. And I'm really glad we could have this group lesson together. See you next time. Okay. Bye. Bye.